Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, here we have another talk in the APGC seminar series, um, and it's increasingly becoming a subtopic of vertical farming as a series of talks, which I have no problems with. I do plenty in that area anyway. And we've got one of the experts in the UK here talking today. So we've got uh, Professor Chun Li Lu from uh, Nottingham Trent University. Um, he's got a PhD in molecular biology from the University of Nottingham, uh, and He's a big grant winner in the whole area. Um, but what he's going to talk about today is to talk about the concept of vertical farming as a sustainable route to production. Um, talk about things like LED lights, nanoparticles, biostimulants potentially, and basically the migration of um, vertical farming into smart food production. It's a data driven system. And I was over in Green Tech last week, and that's absolutely the way everyone's going. So um, looking forward to hear um, the latest advances. Um, from Chun Li. Chun Li, it's all yours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Derek, um, for your introduction. Um, it's a really kind of my honor to be here um, to um, talk about um, some of my research and um, what's going on with the, some vertical farming area. Um, it, it's also this is for this seminar. So it, it's really to be. Um, very very glad to be here and um, talk to everyone um here so yeah my slide um what i'm going to do is today with the with the in the hour um i would like to just to give a little bit background understanding the food supply disruptions um you know we had a several issues um last a few years um energy crisis um, Ukraine war causing lots of problems with the energy. Also, we um, had a COVID um, disruption as well. Um, supply chain got a problem and uh, lots of issues with the food supply. And uh, so I'll give a little bit of background on this. And then I will introduce um, about vertical farming. Um, so what is a vertical farming? Um, what kind of um, current status about the vertical farming research? Um, typically in my group, um, last uh, 10 years, I'm working on the vertical farming, developed technologies um, with the smart vertical farming. So I will show you some um, some case studies. Um, I think I will focus on the technologies, typically smart technologies, we call smart green grow technologies um, through the, the some projects, and funded by Innova UK and also BBSRC, um, KTP as well. So I would like to give a more some kind of the, my group research, including PhD students project. Um, so what we um, have done. And also in the uh, last one, I will show you some feature um, prospects, um, what kind of the feature um, to look at the vertical farming um, in terms of food supply chain, also how to secure our food safety and security as well. Okay. All right, go click next. Is that something? Okay. Right. Um so everyone know um we had some problems um last uh, three, four years. Um so the one is COVID, um, COVID-19, um, the, the costing bigger problem with our food supply chain and also some um, kind of issues with the climate change. So everyone knows the climate change is a big issue now. Um, the drought, extreme weather is happened oftenly. Um, I think this year in June in the UK, I'm very cold. <laughs> it's not like a summer. Um, I heard about the China, Indian, the temperature is 45, some area 50 degree, and this never had happened before. Um, so it, it's, it's climate change is a big issue, how the plants, crops can um, cope with the climate change, extremely weather. So this is the bigger challenges um, through this uh, natural disasters. Um, also, um, economic um, instability. So, you know, um, this is the kind of situation I mentioned, the Ukraine war and uh, other 
issues, um, economic issues. Um, so the even UK um, Brexit as well, um, they affect our um, um, economic, the labor costing as well. So the energy costing is a big issue. Um, so it affect us, our economic and development. Um, so the how this is, uh, um, we can, yeah, we can cope with it. This, this is the difficulties, um, challenges. Um, so there are several papers um, recently published it. If you are interested, I put two papers here. Um, so they've got more details uh, in there. So we look at the um, kind of the analysis we call SWOT, um, strength, weakness, and opportunities and threats um, analysis. Um, through the strengths, um, we need to find kind of the technical side advancement uh, where lots of technologies have been developed. It. Can we use the current some new technologies? Um, we can solve this um, kind of address these challenges um, related to food security. And the weakness uh, we mentioned about um, we lack of the suppliers, so kind of um, lack of transparency, and also some food supply um, with the um, kind of long distance my age food transported from other countries and um, really rely on in the UK, they really rely on the and lots of import imports the, for food. Um, so this is kind of uh, infrastructure as well. Um, so not enough um, for our agriculture. So this is kind of a weakness. Um, opportunities. Um, we have um, lots of op opportunities here. So investments. Um, I know lots of investments now going. Um, I will mention later about technologies, vertical farming area. Um, related to sustainable practice. Um, so the local resourcing as well, they can create lots of opportunities for improvement. Um, so threats, um, we said already climate change issue, um, also other issue is the geopolitical tensions. Um, there are some related to some policy and economic uncertainties, um, all they can um, affect our food supply and security. Um, so several pictures here. So you maybe you're familiar with this a few years ago, two or three years last year as well. Um, UK supermarket with lack of food supply. Um, some fruits, vegetables. Um, so we have limited um, to provide to customers. Um, so they happened several times. Um, so the what, what is the main reasons about this? Um, I think the main reason is about um, weather. So the I think the Spain, um, I think the two years ago they have a very cold the spring, and they couldn't produce enough like tomato and other um, fruits to the UK market. Um, so this is why we lack off. And the second one is a higher costing for the glass house. So last few years, so we heard about energy costing is uh, increased significantly. Um, so there are several big glass out girls so shut down the greenhouse because of the energy costs. Um, so also Brexit, um, the costing lots of issues as well. Um, typically, um, the so labor shortages. Um, so they said about uh, every year we shorted the uh, three hundred thirty thousand workers in the UK. Um, so the, this is a kind of, we need to consider about this, how uh, we can cope uh, this enables. Um, so main behind this shortages, um, we uh, mentioned, um, so the, I think about 70% vegetables and the fruits were imported from um, European countries and other countries as well. So if we look at the map, on the left side, um, you can see this is the my age and um, the food supply my age. Um, it, it's kind of quite a far away. Um, so most of from Spain and maybe 1,000 miles from the UK. Um, so other maybe from African countries as well. Um, so it, it is not a 
efficient, sustainable way um, in terms of the CO2 emission, um, long distance travel um, food imported from other countries. Um, so the fruit and vegetables is the largest trade um, deficit in the UK. Um, so you can see every year we import just the vegetables, about a 10 billion pounds um, imported vegetables from the um, other countries. So um, idea is, can we move our agriculture from the farmland um, field into the city? And we would talk about city, but basically it's a protected environment for food security and the ecosystem. So there as the lots of reports showed agriculture land, um, about a 50% of um, the land um, are degraded. Um, this is a globally, it's a bigger, bigger problem for agriculture. So we're thinking about we can yeah, move to uh, some of this um, to the yeah, in the city or protect the environment, um, we talk about a vertical farming. Um, and also we leave our um, the agriculture land for recovery, um, including ecosystem recovery and including soil and get a biodiversity recovered, wildlife um, recovered. So is this kind of idea that possible? We can do it in the next 10 or 20 years. Um, so yeah, we talk about um, vertical farming last few years. Um, it, it's growing really quick now. And um, so I just give a little bit brief about vertical farming. So what is vertical farming? Um, basically, is a vertical farming is a grow food in the controlled environment. Um, so the avoid is climate change problem issues. And um, this is a cutting edge. Uh, um, process um, the, this is the practice um, so that we can grow food um, with the vertically is a multi layers um, that can go up maybe 20 layers um, so the yeah they can increase yields um, try to maximize crop production and save space um, the resource use efficiency as well um, including nutrients energy and other water so the key um, and the features, um, including we're using like a hydroponic system, the aeroponic system, um, we develop some other co-hybrid hydroponic aeroponic system, um, also aquaponic as well, which people talk about soilless cultivations. Um, there are lots of advanced technologies, um, including maybe LED lighting use, and automations, a smart control sensors. Um, so recently, the AI and IoT um, sensoring technologies have been applied into the vertical farming. Um, so you heard about lots of projects, um, some farmers um, like a company that use this precision control for vertical farming. Um, this is also we said about a sustainable practice, um, less pesticide, um, so the because the controlled environment, um, not easy to yeah to contaminate with other insects and disease. Um, it's a controlled environment. Um, also the water, um, they can recycle the water, reuse it again, can save maybe 80, 90 percent of water, and also nutrients, fertilizers. Um, yeah, bigger things is a food of my age. If you are growing locally, um, they can more resilience and also is reduce the food of my age. So all the advantages that minimize um, the lead of the, um, the agriculture land, um, they can provide sustainable solutions for food production. Um, they can address the loss of challenges with the climate changes and urbanizations. Um, so lots of countries, the people want to move in the city to work in there. Um, so yeah, this is the kind of urbanization is uh, increasing um, in the globally. So we need to cope that with the uh, yeah, city food, city local food. Um, also they can pro produce the really fresh and the safe and uh, lots of research going on with how get a high nutritional value of food um, all year round. 
So this is also is called um, advantages um, for vertical farming. Um, I did a little bit search um, about a global um, vertical farming market size. Um, so if we look at it, the farming last uh, from 2018 and to um, 2020 until maybe protected 2030. So the market, um, this is a com, um, US dollar. So like 2018 globally, this is 3.2 billion US dollars. And um, this is a kind of um, farming market. Um, after a few years, um, just the over um, COVID, they increased the 5.9 billion US dollars. So maybe next eight to 10 years, they could continually increase under the market size and the project is about 25 billion US dollars by 2030. So this is a really promising. Um, so that if we look at the area, um, it's quite uh, interesting. Um, Asian countries, um, including China, India, and other countries, um, they could increase 21 Point seven percent. Um, oh, it, it, it's it's a kind of um percentage for the this area. Um, so the other countries um, like uh, South um North America, um also South America is about twenty percent. Um, European about yeah a little bit less twenty percent, and also Middle East um highlighted um would be. Yeah, bigger market as well, uh, about 17% the market of vertical farming and globally. So this is a kind of um, um, quite a positive information. Um, so the data come from um, several um, vertical farming market analysis. Um, this is for 2030. Um, if we look at the individual the components, um, they show interestingly um, the building based it and the shipping container based it. Um, they're quite a, about a half half. Um, building based like completely indoor farming, maybe with the building tower system. Um, the shipping container is kind of another sh um, vertical farming style, and they can using shipping container convert to the green crops in there. So easy to travel, and they can put a, a different um, kind of areas um, locally, easy to manage it. Um, in terms of a market, uh, with the um, different like hardware, software, and the services, um, so they give a. You can see the trend um, increase dramatically, and typically it's a hardware. Uh, hardware increase um, about. Like 2020, there should be, um, yeah, 2030 should be like 3.6 billion US dollars. Um, so the yeah, 14 sorry, 14 or 15 um, billion million dollars. Um, this is a quite large, um, the chunk of the the market for hardware and also software as well. Um, service um, for the market. But um, there looks really good, um, really kind of the good feature to see the vertical farming. Um, but there's some challenges. Um, so you heard about um, um, several vertical farms closed down. Um, bigger farm in America is Aero Farm. They closed. Um, so the I think reason for uh, these challenges um, is about high energy costing. And they used it. Um, so we calculated. So for one square meter whole year, um, the costing the electricity to run system energy uh, about two hundred and fifty kilowatt. Um, the costing is quite big um, in terms of um, current um, energy costing. Uh, the price is really high. Um, another um, kind of issue is a high the capital costs. Um, if we build this vertical farming system, you need a large of money to do it. Um, so the yeah, also the keep a uh, kind of running maintenance costing also is high as well. Um, another issue is kind of people 
um, how we we'll get uh, experienced people working with the vertical farming area. We lock off some the workers and working there. They haven't got a proper train, train, trend and they're also educated for people working vertical farming. Um, on the technology side, um, we can see a lack of digital twin technologies, uh, automation, smart control system. Um, also, we have a limited number of plants we can choose. Um, I think most of our vertical farming now is leafy vegetables, uh, microgreens, um, other kind of herbs. Um, they're quite a popular lettuce to grow vertical farming um, really well. Um, how about other veg vegetables? Um, so we lack of the kind of um, uh, more plants we can choose. Um, in terms of whole system, um, we lack of system optimizations and also we lack of the scale up. Um, so lots of research um, going well, um, but how we can convert it is the kind of technologies into the commercial. So this is also the challenge as well. So what about the solutions? Um, we talk about the solutions. Um, I am um, based on the research and um, we talk about, um, so one is um, in terms of problem with the energy. Um, so we can use the waste heat and the waste CO2 for vertical farming. Um, we call decentralized energy um, use. And also we can use the renewable energy um, you, maybe you heard about BBC News recently reported the Gloucestershire that developed another new vertical farming. They're running with the solar panel um, that cover the um, some energy costing. So this is the kind of um, um, this is the way we can reduce the energy use for vertical farming. And another one is digital twin technologies. Um, they are called IoT technologies, AI sensors, um, how to monitor um, this is the plants and grow to maximize the productions. Um, so this is a really promising area. Um, it's quite new um, how use this technology apply into the vertical farming, um, including robotics. Um, recently I come back from China and China using the robotic arm to pick up the um, vegetables, um, also maybe strawberries in the vertical farming tower area. Um, it, it looks so cool um, technologies, um, but a lot of everywhere use it at the moment. Another issue um, we talk about energy as well, so we can design the system um, building um, really with a vertical farming efficient way for energy use. Um, so there are lots of research and started now um, to, to look at the buildings, tower system, how they get efficient with the energy use. Um, another one, LED lighting, um, this is uh, about energy saving, um, how we can develop energy combined with a smart control, reduce the lighting recipes um, for the lighting, um, more efficient use. Um, so the also we find it really useful look at the plant gen, genotyping and the phenotyping, um, how to find the plants and response um, to the different uh, kind of treatments, lighting, nutrients, um, also environment control system. So there we can do lots of research through the phenotyping. Um, I will show you some results. We got it. Um, and then another area. Uh, it's kind of genome editing. Um, it's a really exciting area. Um, how to produce um, breed new varieties and uh, suitable for growing the indoor farming. So this is will be feature. We need to pay lots of attention on this. Um, is have a new varieties suitable growing in the indoor glass house, and this will be massive benefit for agriculture. Right. Um. So. What a research we have done in last 10 years on the vertical farming. Um, we focus on the three we call smart green growth. Um, so smart, and um, we're using fully automatically precision control. We apply AI and um, IoT technologies, data driven um, for the our vertical farming. Um, also, we look at the soilless cultivations. 
um, um, to look after what this is the aeroponic, um, which crops are suitable growing aeroponic and hydroponic. And there are lots of difference depends on the plant species and crop different varieties as well. Um, how to increase enhance the nutrition value from the crops. And um, I think Derek did lots of research in the in this area. Um, we can use the renewable energy and the solar panel and, and how to monitor it combined with the smart control system and to produce um, energy saving for vertical farming. Um, the growth we talk about and provide precision during the inputs and maximize productive and the profit. And significantly, we can see the impact um, for UK economic and the community. Um, we have uh, several projects um, working with the local communities and um, help local schools and the uh, supermarket and uh, um, other maybe the food banks and to produce more food for UK. So, at first research, I started um, in the greenhouse. Um, so this is uh, one of my um, PhD student and the other colleagues um, working modeling. Um, so what we did it, um, we using the greenhouse, um, including Chinese solar uh, greenhouse, and we monitor um, climate change model. So first of all, I build this mathematical model um, to a predicted climate change, climate the control system model, um, including temperature, humidity, CO2, um, also inside, outside. Um, so this is the first model. Um, and this is a lot of sensors put into the glass house and greenhouse um, to monitor the um, in the three years time. And then crop growth model. Um, so we look at the plant performance, um, dry weight, um, uh, by mass, how the response to different environment. Um, so we built this the large of data. We produced it. Um, so we created this is a crop growth model. So after that, we integrated the climate change. The world. Um, this is the climate uh, control model and the crop growth model together um, to combine the two and to look at the. Uh, simulation results, um, we found the fascinating. Um, also, invalidated um, for the full scale model. Um, so, this model built is, is uh, so efficient. Um, we thought um, achieved 98% um, optical um, efficiency. Yeah, you don't worry about <laughs> right hand. <laughs> this is a, uh, it's kind of a model um, and connections for different parameters we used. Um, so which way we you, you looked at um, how the simulated and the results. Um, so yeah, if you interested in this kind of research, um, we paper published into the applied energy. Um, so this is a, a lots of data in here, um, modeling and also evaluation. Um, so if you interested you can look at this paper so then we move on to indoor um, vertical farming um, so indoor farming uh, we use shipping container because quite a small um, easy to design experiments um, so what we um, we did um, first of all we put a sensors and we call iot monitoring system um, monitor and shipping container temperature, humidity, CO2, and also lighting conditions and nutrients conditions, um, where lots of sensors and um, put it in there, and then collect the data. And then another side, we have a plant phenotyping machine on the on the right hand. So this is a can monitor the plant performance. Um, they're really detailed and in real time. And um, this will give a massive um, big data. Um, for plants response to different lighting um, environment con conditions and the change in the experiments, the um, treatments, um, so easily to pick up. And then we can use AI. Um, AI um, is, a, is a big kind of predictions. We use the my stores and they're working with the AI, the computer science. Um, I don't know how to use it. And 
they work out with the data how to predict it models and then they can give a decision on what kind of recipes what lighting recipe we need what kind of nutrients recipes so maybe i will going to talk about a little bit more about this so how this is the ai smart system works um basically um we connect the data and through the intelligent sensors um, for example, we have a nutrient sensors and not just the EC measure the ions, um, sort of ions. They measure I think individual nutrients like NPK and also micronutrients as well. So we got the sensors. Um, so then we can get this the data and put it into the um, kind of computer and uh, learning intelligence thinking um, and then communicate with the data with the plant phenotyping data. And then after that, they can, uh, using deep learning, um, the control to acting and um, kind of give you some indications about how efficient using lighting and um, based on the plant performance and energy costing, and um, also nutrients as well, how uh, nutrition value, they can produce it um, through the data we um, analyze from um, several like mass spectrometries and the ICP, the measurements. So this is the IoT um, kind of monitoring system. Um, so first of all, using sensors, collecting data, and then connected data um, sent to the cloud system. Um, we have a several hard tree center involved um, the, through the Innovate UK project. Um, also, we have a uh, um, Alibaba cloud system. And we monitor Chinese and solar and greenhouse data. So then we have all the data we can do um, data mining. Um, so remove some data, maybe if we power off, um, how remove it, um, we can mining data and the processing it, um, make the data it's um, some kind of useful. Um, and then and we have an app. Um, so develop the app and interface um, delivering information to user um, using the app control the system for the shipping container. Um, so this is a, what we did a smart shipping container. So we have a solar panel generate the electricity. We monitor how much energy they generated from solar, how much generated from the national grid. So all monitoring details. And then we can sense the monitor temperature, environment conditions. And then we install in the inside and the outside comparison as well. So through this, um, we have a plant phenotyping machine and um, tell you how plant performance and the data you have. So once we collect data doing processing, decision making and the control actions. So all the data uh, we're using the some software to analyze data and storage um, in the cloud system. So that they can sharing and um, make a decision for the our use the automations. So this is the example we developed it um, our IoT monitoring system. Um, you can see the data coming in the real time. You can see the screen um, all temperature humidity in the real time. So the the box on the right hand um, we develop a very small box now contain maybe more than 12 um, 15 sensors. Um, the the data they can collect from this small box. Um, so sensor can put in the growing system and the shipping container. So this is a kind of a data um, for environment um, data, condition, um, humidity, temperature, lighting, CO2, and temperature in the water, nutrients, um, all data every minute um, you can get the data. Um, so another technology is we use the phenotyping um, data. Uh, so this is really helpful. Um, so the so called plant eye machine. Um, if you um, put your plants in, they scan it um, every minute and give your data how plants performance is related to the different treatments. Um, it's a really good thing they can monitor at least 18 parameters um, related to the plant performance. Um, so yeah, it's also generated image, a 3D image as well. Um, so because of the video quite a big, I got some videos. Um, so it's quite difficult to show it, quite a slow running. 
So I didn't show this 3D image. Um, it, it's a real time to monitor the plants, the, the, the how changing um, in the real time um, in terms of the plant of, um, morphologies. So that can give a lot of data and uh, you can analyze it and relate it to the different factors. Um, so uh, the next one is a one example, our lighting experiments. So R is a red, B is a blue, and G is a green, and FR is a far red. So we had several treatments related to light. Um, so you can see um, differences. Um, the data that show the 12 um, parameters we measured, including plant height and digital biomass and leaf area and NDVI, how to healthy the plants. So they all give you all the real time data. Um, it is a massive data and we get it. You can monitor every day if you want. You can monitor once per week. And this is the data we'll show you is once per week data. So once we have um, all the data, um, we really want to see the light recipes. Um, I did recipes, lighting recipe like five, six years ago. Um, we give uh, published the papers um, like red, blue, far red, what ratio is good with the traditional uh, experiments. But now when we move to AI, I find it um, fascinating. Um, it's a really kind of wonderful um, process. Uh, we can get a, a more efficient the AI, they can do predictions. So what we did, we're using AI algorithms. Um, first of all, as get the data, um, from kind of um, environment and also the lighting conditions. And then with classifications, predicting of um, try to find the best uh, prediction is which way. So my postdoc, they really expertise working in this area. So our university will have a strong team working AI. Um, also, we have a Hartree Center support us with the platform. So we um, modified it and then to look at it, uh, which model is suitable. Um, we did a comparison and classification for the predictions. Um, we found the BIA STM is the best and prediction success rate is 97%. So, and then we can use the um, fuzzy, um, fuzzy in interference system called FIS model. Um, we can, this is just an example for lighting recipe we produced. Um, so we can look at the lighting wavelengths, um, red, blue, far red, and other colors, and also look at the intensity and the ratio of the lighting as well, and including combined plant performance data. Um, so this is the input um, related to the different plant uh, stages um, when growing day one, day two, until day 12. This is the letter we used it. Um, the input is a huge, um, we call it 765 input with the lighting and the other plant and with the performance data of 100. And the output, we look at the performance like digital biomass, we look at it and we look at it in details and uh, each light treatment, how it affect digital biomass. And then we give the, um, the for the fizzy rule, the best system. And then they give out, come out with the different suggestions, treatments, lighting recipes. Um, after um, this is the algorithm deep learning. So this is the one example I could show you. Um, we um, we found the fascinating. Um, we put a, a this is all data in. So AI recipe showed um, the every day tell you different light in the recipes, um, different combination of light, including intensity as well. So every day give a different um, kind of um, um, lighting conditions. So the in the end we measured it AI recipe the plant letters increase use thirty five percent, and also use less energy. And so the control with the um, compare with the control. Um, this is called RB, red, blue, far red. Normal people used it. Um, it it's really exciting. Um, we use the technologies. Also similar, we're using similar um, technologies. Uh, AI algorithm. We 
uh, monitor with the nutrients, um, optimize nutrients recipes, um, the NPK and other um, micronutrients as well. So this is just a show example how we put it in. Um, then we can have uh, some um, predicting and also which nutrients is suitable in which stage um, of developing the plant stages. So there's some results. Um, we haven't shown all some um, kind of results are going to publish this soon. Um, so this is the recipes we funded, five recipes showed here. Um, they can increase nitrogen efficiency 38%. Um, some is a 30, um, about 35, 38. Um, some is a 50. Um, some recipes increase the phosphate efficiency about 60%. Um, so it's a really amazing way you see, you, you see normally they, they give you um, not efficient, um, but it depends on the different stages. They, they tell you which plants, which day reduced it, um, the, maybe nitrogen in the beginning and then increase nitrogen later. So they can save lots of um, the nutrients and you put it in the hydroponic system. So some yeah, recipe compared with the whole gland plants, um, you can see the digital biomass increased and um, plants um, look quite healthy as well. Um, also, we measured um, quality of the lettuce um, with the different recipes and compare with the control. This is called R8 and um, this control. So the nutrients um, recipes and uh, nutrients value, um, you can see R5 um, is the highest with the phenol, uh, phenolic uh, contents and also on the flavonoid is also is R5 uh, is uh, much higher. Um, so they have a significant difference um, between recipes and the control. Also, we did a um, tomato experiment. Um, this is a micro -tom tomato we used for hydroponic system. Um, so you can see um, our predicted recipes um, increase um, total phenolic and also antioxidants and antioxidants as well. Um, several recipes um, increase um, the value. Um, in the tomato fruits. Um, another area um, we look at uh, is uh, vitamin B12 um, because the vegetarian they don't eat meat. Um, so that, but uh, if we um, don't eat meat, all vitamin B12 come from meat. The so vegetables don't have meat. So we thinking about how increase iron and vitamin B12 um, to the um, to the plants. So we're using nanoparticle technologies and we're putting our nutrients, ions into the, um, the nanoparticles. Um, so they look at the size, what size they look at is best. Um, so there's some results um, I could show you today. Um, so it depends on the different treatments. So it's a really promising. We um, increase different the concentration of vitamin B12. Uh, we, you can see the plants increase the vitamin B12 iron significantly. Um, if we look at the green one uh, with the 100 ppm um, vitamin B12, we put in um, the in the plants uh, we detected um, really high uh, vitamin B12, uh, more e um, efficient. Um, so others quite similar. We have the roots measure the leaf as well. Um, so this is one we measured antioxidants, um, how they could help um, with the vitamin B12 and with antioxidants. Some data show you in this figure. Um, so we measured the other secondary metabolites, how affected with the other nutrients value. Um, um, I've got 10 minutes left. Um, so the by stimulants, um, this is another area um, I got funding from Innova UK, joined with the micro mix on um, another ecoponic. Um, so we're working on the seaweed extract and the by stimulants. Um, so to look at the drought tolerance. So we spread um, by stimulants, they have a different by stimulants, and we spread to the pak choy, and we found the increase. Um, you can see the picture, picture, picture after the drought 10 days um, with the spread with the biostimulants increase um, significant the drought tolerance. Um, so the another picture is show the peas 
um, with the spread and um, increase um, tolerance 35%. Um, also, we look at the gene function. We did um, RNA um, extraction, um, and then we look at the RNA sequencing. We identify genes, um, which gene related to the um, with the bi-stimulants. Um, so the drought stress, uh, we found a really interesting data with the uh, transform factors. Um, also, we built it with the through gene networks, and we found it related to by stimulants. Um, so this can help you explain what um, was the mechanism about the by stimulants. Um, so lots of research going on in this area. Um, I don't have the time to um, give more details. So what about the feature? Um, I'm really interested in uh, smart agriculture, um, including using AI and technologies um, make vertical farming more smart and more um, kind of uh, productions, um, high value, nutrients quality. So the methods, and we still look working on the methods, uh, how improve improve the protections, and this is the including data mining machine learning and neural networks of use and um, also the um, improve the fizzy um, kind of um, the product system. Um, so also we uh, want to combine it with other people expertise together, um, knowledges and also genetic algorithms so we can put it in. So the all kind of intelligent hybrid system um, to adaptive the adaptive the system for our vertical farming system. So this is what we're going to do and next stage. Another area um, is really exciting. I mentioned how um, breed new varieties suitable for um, indoor farming. Um, so this is a the grid technologies we mentioned about gene editing, um, CRISPR cars um, are successful now. Technology can be used in the UK. Uh, it is um, it's not a transgenic um, plants now. Um, it's uh, treated with the normal um, use. Um, so yeah, it's we we really excited. Um, once we have a lot of data, um, kind of. Um, um, some RNA sequencing data, we can find the specific genes um, suitable growing like increased photosynthesis efficiency, which we, we got it some key genes and related photosynthesis. So while well, now we're doing gene editing now, so this will be really a um, good opportunity for a feature and uh, to look at and um, find new varieties. So this is a kind of area and um, directions for future research, interesting on um, vertical farming um, based on the key areas, precision farming, data science, and also we look at the purpose for food and the human health. And um, vertical farming also is a great help for human health as well, foundation of food. So we look at the sustainable production and food supply chain and the nutrition and the health. Um, based on the sustainable productions, we focus on the genetic breeding and the soilless cultivation, crop image and the sensing and for uh, data. And also for the supply chain, we, we have a several PhD students working on the traceable, the blockchain and the food waste. Um, and this area is a crop GPT. I'm really interested. Um, if anyone interested, we can you could contact me um so we tried to get a using child gpt platform um this is the created the new kind of information um driver for look at the crop um so the, in terms of genetic um, gene functions and the phenotyping plant physiology data we can put in the created the crop gpt um, also in that to the nutrients for health, um, how function the plants, um, hopes and the other uh, medical plants we can use um, through the vertical farming group and um, nutritional map, um, trends analysis, and also AI for human health. Um, so the all area um, is it, really looks like uh, interesting to me. Um, so we can yeah some talk about. Yeah, this is the area is a policy and uh, for industrial collaborations. And now we've got lots of research now. How move our research 
um, results into the commercial. Um, this is a big gap there. So this is the, we need the government support, um, build the bridge um, for using research um, kind of the results and to commercial. So we really want to uh, get more funding and support from government and the policy for UK farmers as well, how to support UK farmers um, through government. Um, so then the industrial partnership, um, so between um, the academias, uh, academics and also industrials, commercial, we have to um, collaborate with together in this area and to look at the efficiency, smart technologies. Uh, another area I look at it is education. Um, for teaching, training, and the people, and the students, and young people, and working in this area. Um, so we just set up the new master course, um, doing training um, for um, this the smart agriculture. So innovations. Um, so for the feature farming. Um, so how we can identify um, kind of the models um, they can help um, to avoid um, the disruption for the food supply. Um, so how to link to the um, field to farms and to the market. So this is a kind of uh, models and um, supermarket might be interested as well. Um, the investment in R&D. So this is a kind of important investment in vertical farming. I know several companies, including IGS, and they got a quite large funding. Um, from investment um, for in this area. So it's a really brilliant. Um, so the hope of we can, yeah, working on that together and um, to do more collaborations. Um, another thing so we need to prepare um, maybe ahead if anything happen in the future crisis, um, how we can cope with the food supply. So this is the kind of um, for the future um, plan and management and technologies use So, um, so the timing, um, so I just have five minutes left. I just quickly um, summarize um, in terms of the technologies um, and the smart agriculture, vertical farming. So we need um, purpose improve our crop productions um, using the new technology or advanced technologies. Um, also, I'm really interested in AI through AI and other platforms um, we can um, yeah, doing crop together, the, the cooperation um, to, to do some research. This is a multidisciplinary area. So we have to agriculture and scientists in the plant science, crop science, and working with the computer science people um, to make this happen. Um, enhance the national, international collaborations. This is so important for smart agriculture and the vertical farming area. So I put this link to connection networks. Um, so it, it's uh, this is a feature. Um, so for um, the our vertical farming. Um, I would like to thank you, um, um, my group of people involved. Um, so the people working on the, the different projects. Um, I really thank the Inlove UK. Um, also STFC funding, um, so the support this uh, research and also Hydro Center, Omics, um, I, um, Clean Grow for the nutrients and um, other some Chinese partners as well. Um, so there, yeah, this is a, yeah, this is all. Um, thank you so much for your listening. Um, so I can take questions. Thanks for that, Joey. Um, we have lots of questions already. Do you want to stop sharing so we can maybe see people's faces if they want to ask questions themselves? Sure. So, um, Rosario, you had plenty of questions. Do you want to unmute and ask the questions yourself? You're more than welcome to. Uh, yes, yes, thanks. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. It was very, very interesting. Um, some of the questions are motivated because a few years ago, ago I had the uh, crazy idea of funding a seed company that then didn't work in vertical farming. Um, so my questions were basically more or less all related. So I wanted, was wondering if you advise, envision which vegetables could be the next to be useful for vertical farming out of greens and herbs. 
Mm. Uh, in which species you have focused your uh, experiments or which species you're testing your phenotyping system? Uh, which traits you think we should focus in breeding for vertical farming? And do you think we could apply the AI approach that you're using for uh, the recipes for lights and nutrients also to the breeding of new varieties? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for questions. It's really interesting. Um, in terms of the what plants we can grow in the vertical farming system. Um, so we have tried all different different crops, um, including um, kind of um, the potatoes, sweet potatoes, um, um, also the maize as well. Um, so we have uh, tried all different. Um, also my postdoc um, now he used to be my postdoc. He work in China now. They grow rice in the hydroponic system. Um, so there, I think the in terms of the high value crops, I think will be um, really good. Um, recently, I have some projects using Chinese medicine to produce specific compounds. Um, this will be also another way and to grow high value um, kind of plants um, for medical purpose. So the yeah, I think this is the area. It's not just the food. Um, also, the thinking about the human health as well. Um, so there's some food and we're thinking about how, because the energy costing um, is quite high, how we can grow crops um, with the easy way, also with the cheaper way and reduce costing. So the, I think most of the people now growing leafy vegetables is fine, um, but how we can look at the high value one. I'm still undergoing lots of research going on. Um, yeah, in terms of your second question about the breeding, um, I think I know several universities um, in China that work with the faster speed, speedy, and the breeding programs using vertical farming. Um, usually, if you're growing crops in the field, they take a long time, but now they look at it um, with the like rice growing the hydroponic system, they're much faster to get the seeds and cross it, to get the next generation much quicker. I think for me, gene editing is a feature. So this is a kind of technology. If we find the interest in genes and related to the indoor farming growing the, like uh, trades, and this is the, would be find the good opportunity, find the genes like uh, for the sense of the efficiency gene, we find it. Um, we can use gene editing, put it into the plants, and then they can get a new varieties. Um, this is the quicker um, using the yeah, CRISPR-Cas technologies. So this is a feature. Um, in terms of AI um, recipes, um, this is a massive um, potential for our vertical farming. Um, we started working on this. We have some recipes tested at the really good. We look at the commercial now. So that any companies interested, um, we can talk about this. Um, so the yeah recipe we tested in the lab is uh, the green shipping container. We found it really well. But how about the large scales? Maybe not working very well. We don't know. We need to test it <laughs> for um, kind of evaluate it, this. Is it answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you. Yeah, thank it's you your question. Yeah. Rob. Yeah, just to follow up on the, the breeding question that was asked, we are actually at the James Hutt Institute conducting BBSRC funded research into lettuce breeding for indoor ag, and we're primarily looking at light use efficiency and architectural traits. Um, we have observed uh, a certain amount of natural variation in those traits. And so now we're sort of moving towards a mapping pro uh, approach to try to identify the genes which are underpinning that, that natural mm -hmm. variation. But I have a question actually for, for our speaker, which was um, around your AI models um, and what constraints you place on those models, right? Because particularly where you're looking at light recipe, one way of, of enhancing crop growth, right, is to, in is to increase the overall daily light integral. Yes. You know, are you are you placing those constraints and are you actually able to increase that growth using the same energy envelope or or, or is it or is it just that you're altering the inputs? 
Yeah, we um, AI can do it. Um, so first, the recipes we just look at kind of uh, plant digital biomass, um, biomass um, increase the yields. But we saw this is not a like a suitable for maybe commercial use. We combined with the energy cost. So using AI, so we monitor energy costing every time which treatments uh, like uh, red blue light. So if we increase the blue light, the more energy we used. So can we reduce a little bit and blue light reduce like uh, the blue light, increase the red light, the energy come down. But how about the plants? The plants need more blue light. So this kind of the balance, I think the AI, they can do it. For human, we can read lots of papers, but maybe design experiment to confirm it. But my feeling is AI can do a better job. Uh, if you put a lot of data input it and give the learning, machine learning it, they're getting better and better. So we designed different experiments that AI to learn it. And then we find it is a balance now in the BTV. Plants can grow quite well, but they can save energy. And, and are you having to, to generate new models for each species, or do you find that, that you know, you yeah. generalized models will fit across all species? Yeah, that, 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 this is very interesting. We're thinking about it like, like a child GPT, they can help. <laughs> so this is the AI model. Um, so we build a platform and collect genetic background. Um, so for example, the China they're doing now um, called maize GPT. So they collect all the maize, the varieties, a thousand, thousand varieties. They got a huge data in terms of gene expression, in terms of the plant physiology. They did a large number of work to do it. So they can relate to the maybe nutrient use efficiency, related to the resistant disease. There are huge data there. The how we can use it, the the child GPT platform to build the system. So it, it's a challenging, but the the ones um the feature that could do some work for help us prediction. So which variety and maybe suitable growing indoor. Um, so without doing gene editing might be found some suitable. At the moment, I working with the uh, maize um, project. So we found some maize variety. It's suitable for growing in the hydroponic system. So th this is a could be this is the genetic background is different. So why this maize suitable in the in the hydroponic system? So what this is the quality of the maize we looked at? So it, it, it's a um, it's lots of work to do, but really interesting. I, I'm sure in the future um, we can find the interesting platform. Um, the, this is the why China do it. The build this the crop maize. GPT is a public use. Farmers, breeders, they can use it because they want to collect it like uh, which crop, which maize variety cross this, which uh, variety they can get a new hybrid one. It's uh, suitable for farmer use, high yields, maybe res resistant disease. They give indications instead of doing lots of research experiments in the field. So they could kind of feature we could have thinking about yeah crop gpt yeah okay thank you so bunch of time maybe one last question there's one from uh velma cortez we're talking about the we can uplift the levels levels of components so does that run a risk for people over consuming and that maybe feeds into one i considered on the nanotechnology what's the regulatory implications for using the nanotech in food because i know in the UK, DEFRA are quite tight on the use of nanotechnology in foods. And it's not necessarily looked on favourably, I would say. Yeah. Um, my colleague um, is Garas. He's working in nanoparticles. Um, his expertise working this and in the food, um, in the plants, animals, and lots of projects. Um, I, I, he told me, I asked the same question when I, before I started this journey project with him. He said that the 
the regulations is fine. You can grow using the nano particles um, okay. grow put in the crops. Um, they send me lots of documents, government documents. <laughs> the city is allowed to do it. And there's some certain, um, I think particles might be uh, a little bit tricky, depends the size as well. Um, the, there's something maybe we can look at it. Um, mm -hmm. they, they have some regulations in there. Yeah. Okay. Right, I don't want I don't want to drag this out too far. Um, if anyone else has got additional questions, contact details for um, Shun Wei Lu uh, are there. Please get in contact. Um, if you show your um, appreciation in the usual format, thank you very much, and we'll hope to speak to you again. And please keep in touch for the rest for following on APG seminars in the future. Um, Thanks, Shun Wei uh, Lu, and we'll catch up soon with regard to yeah, follow up sure. projects. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Thanks you everyone. so much. Yeah. Okay. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.